It's 8 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, October 1st. One, two, and three, and we're out the door. This is the time we've been talking about for about a week. Been showing the maps, and I kept saying, let's stop it at 8 o'clock on Wednesday morning when there's going to be a real tight pressure gradient. And that's what causes wind. What is wind? Air moving from high to low pressure. And we were wondering how many millibars the pressure gradient would be this morning. Well, enough millibars that the stuff is getting blown around here. This is a sign, right? Bring in your summer furniture. No, I refuse to bring in my summer furniture. It's gonna be 80 degrees this weekend. <laughs> it is too. Uh, so we have dual hurricanes out there. We've got a strong high pressure system up there. I've got my noise canceling microphone on. Is it working? Can you hear me through the wind? How windy is it? Well, we have the Maravellis Extreme Performance Anemometry. Anemometer next to the beachcomber in Wellfleet measured a wind gust this morning to 47.6 miles per hour there. And the beachcomber cam, not very helpful, a lot of salt on the window. Uh, we have about a 10 foot swell and a 14 second period. But the thing is that swell coming from the hurricanes to our south and the air is coming from the north. So the surf is really beat up. Good surf yesterday, hopefully good surf again tomorrow. But this morning, even at the warm winds cam where it's offshore at Narragansett Town Beach in Rhode Island as the sun was coming up, no one in the water. The wind is just beating up the surf. And so maybe we'll have some good wraparound surf here when the wind lets up tomorrow afternoon. A lot of people, Vergi from Norwell saying, have there ever been two hurricanes so close together off the east coast of the United States? And I don't remember any. I, I refer to other sources. Ryan Maui posted on X that Connie and Diane were very close to one another. In 1955, Connie came in and then less than a week later, Diane came in, but I don't think they were this close together. And also he says that Wilma in 2005, remember that year, we went right through the alphabet, was a hurricane and it was uh, coming uh, across, I think it was the Yucatan Peninsula and it absorbed tropical storm Alpha that had formed near Hispaniola. So a rare event indeed. I always say once in a lifetime weather happens to someone somewhere on earth every single day. And so this is a unique experience and it was about seven days ago last Thursday that I put out this post saying is there going to be a 97 millibar pressure gradient between the high pressure system in Canada and uh, center of Hurricane Umberto at that time, it looked like Imelda was gonna go in and dissipate over the mid-Atlantic state, so it was just gonna be Umberto, but instead, Umberto is now disintegrating and the pressure in the center of it's now up to 979 millibars, where it was supposed to be in the 940s back then when we made that forecast. And the central pressure on that high pressure system worked out pretty good. It's a 1033 millibar high, a 979 millibar hurricane, so that's 21 plus 33, a 54 millibar pressure gradient a far cry from 97 millibar pressure gradient. So it could have been worse. The wind could have been worse. And it's only really right at the coast where you get the wind. Here is the regional roundup at seven o'clock. Cold high pressure system, uh, 27 degrees at Saranac Lake, 31, Whitefield, New Hampshire, 39 all the way down to Orange, Massachusetts. And the red numbers are wind gusts and the lines are the wind barbs. If there are no wind barbs like it Orange, Massachusetts, it's calm right now. And then the wind gusting to 33 miles per hour at Nantucket, uh, Blair on his boat in the harbor said he had a gust to 36. And then that buoy south of Nantucket gusting to 38. So uh, it's uh, the wide perimeter of the storms offshore and the southern end of this high pressure system. National Hurricane Center now says that Umberto is not long for this world. It's disintegrating along the front the same front that went through here has grabbed an Umberto and Melda is left behind by itself and is likely intensifying a little bit close to category two as it goes right over Bermuda tonight. And as for the possible Fujiwara, uh, that is no longer in the forecast. Here's the Euro we showed yesterday showing the two storms interacting and becoming one.
but instead now you can cl clearly see on the upper right there that uh, Umberto is just kind of falling apart and becoming elongated part of the front, the boundary between the new cold in southeastern Canada and the tropical air. And that leaves Imelda by itself with the tropical air, strengthening a little bit there as it goes through Bermuda tonight and tomorrow. And then Umberto is a ghost of its former self. Imelda kind of slows down a little bit. So Imelda may try and pull a fast one on us in the central Atlantic, we'll see. I don't think it would have any impact on our weather other than maybe to try and help out with surf a little bit. So surf should stay up as the wind comes down. Are there are sailboat races today. Is this the last night for the sailboat Wednesday night twilight series. Here's the wind forecast from the NAM and the purple is sustained wind of about 20 to 25 knots. So sustained 20 to 25 knots and it's just along the shore. Cape Ann closer to 20 knots, Monomoy closer to 25 knots and stop it at 7 p.m. Or, or 6 p.m. 6 p.m. If there is a race this evening it looks north northeast at about 20 knots. So <laughs> that would be something to see. Maybe too much wind. I'm not sure. And it's pretty cold outside too. Temperature is probably going to be about 62, 63, but uh, the moon will be big and bright. The moon and uh, none of those high thin clouds. So many fun uh, optical images coming in the last uh, 48 hours with those sun dogs and halos. We'll talk about that in the end more. And keep that wind forecast going. Sorry, put that wind forecast back into motion just to see that the purple kind of is still with us tonight and tomorrow morning. And then it's really tomorrow afternoon that the wind gradient is going to let up slack up from uh, Cape Ann to Cape Cod. Finally, by tomorrow evening, the wind is gone and then the high pressure comes right over us. It's going to be gorgeous Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the most part. Here's the meteogram for Nashua, New Hampshire. And the next chance of rain is about next Wednesday or so. Between now and then, close to 60 today and tomorrow, then close to 70. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, Saturday, Saturday low 70s. And then Sunday, uh, close to 80 and we are going to have a period of warm to record warm next week of temperatures especially away from the shore of 80 to 85 degrees for several days in a row and the foliage is looking really good. I went to some of the webcams this morning it was so cold saw people playing golf there at uh, Sugarloaf and uh, no that was Sunday River. Sunday River they were golfing at Sunday River this morning no snow guns and at Sugarloaf I looked at the beach cam there and uh, yeah, the beach, that's what they call it at Sugarloaf Ski Resort. And the colors look wonderful. So it's going to be peak foliage for a lot of New England this weekend. What a weekend to not be on the roads <laughs> looking at trees. We break for gulls. They just point into the wind. I just think it's magical how birds just can sit there and float on air without even moving their wings. Wonderful. And all those birds yesterday, I don't know where they are now, but they'll be back over the weekend. Uh, fish are still biting. All right, let's go to the Euro now, uh, the wide shot of the United States and just kind of go back to our regularly scheduled, pretty much hurricane free and snowstorm free forecast for the next 10 days. High pressure is building right over us. Pressure gradient slacks. You get to the center of the high, the wind goes light. And then on the back side of the high, there's only going to be storminess way down South Carolina and Georgia. And we get a return flow from the south and southwest. Saturday. Now there is a little weak backdoor front. You see that other high up on the top of the map there on the right. Uh, there's a weak backdoor front that may try and bring an onshore breeze to Maine to eastern Massachusetts on Sunday. So Sunday afternoon we could be 70 at the shore while it's 85 inland, something like that as the water is getting much colder now. But even if that does happen, the high pressure uh, is going to dominate is the one over the mid-Atlantic states and that's pushing the warmer air right back in here with that 564 and 570 line going way up into central Canada. That's it's warm to hot all the way up into Canada at this point and in the front in the west there there is still some snow not so much for Montana anymore but uh, for Wyoming with that front which is going to stretch out and looks like it's going to get in here probably about Wednesday as the storm goes to our north on Wednesday. Now this is something different. Yesterday it had a nor'easter for us on Thursday but now it has the front coming in on a Wednesday with a low pressure wave going to our west and north so that could be showers and a thunderstorm Wednesday into Thursday morning and then that 540 line comes down only quickly in and out. No, not long enough for any snow. Uh, that was some cold air right there next uh, uh, Thursday and then Friday is now day 10. That's October 10th and it is, uh, what is that, about a 10-20 high pressure system over the Great Lakes so that would be kind of seasonable air and most of the nation is warm. I don't see too much cold in Canada. Uh, there is going to be another cold shot coming in probably about day 15 or so. That's, a, that's the real long range. But for now, uh, that's the end of the weather right there. Uh, it's 
so long these things are, so long. Uh, the Yggdrasil going up and down, look at that. Are you guys in there going up and down with it? <laughs> and uh, so ultimately it's a summer-like pattern right now. This is just a brief chilly interlude in a summer-like pattern that's gonna go on for at least another week. So, you know, things always change in October. It's October 1st, rabbit, rabbit. There was a baby rabbit right down here yesterday and T-Rex can definitely smell it. The rabbits love it in there and they love it in there. And yesterday, for the end more, yesterday's weather today, we met uh, Phil, who was working on eradicating the knotweed in here. We're gonna hear a little lesson on how to try and eradicate knotweed. And we'll talk about the, the beautiful optical phenomena in the sky. Oh yes, and uh, Carl Weller Jr. in Florida, in, in the Atlantic, Florida, near Melbourne Beach. He was out there looking at the waves yesterday. He said they look a lot bigger uh, up on the hill. This is the view from up on the hill. Look at that. He said they were double overhead. And that's uh, the swell from both Umberto and Imelda there on the Florida east coast, south of Cape Canaveral. And there, there it is close up to the ocean. And uh, those are the kind of waves where you're really going to be careful because these long period ground swells, one can come in and knock your feet out from underneath you. And that almost happened right there a little bit, but that's nice 80 degree water and there were a lot of people around and people know how to stay safe, right? T-Rex, what are you barking at? Huh? All right, come on this way, Rex. Thank you, uh, Carl Willer Jr. for that post. You're gonna come up and go skiing in a month. We'll be skiing in Thanksgiving, if not sooner. And uh, no, no sign of any more freeze. Uh, tonight there's gonna be a little freeze in far northern New England, uh, but in, here in southern New England, my garden's gonna keep on going. Uh, and more and more and more freeing Steve so we can go over to the edge so we can get a look at Steve. He knows that he's free. Go ahead, Steve. Come on, let's go. Come on, you come over here. <laughs> oh, he hopped. He missed the hop. All right, you come for the pets too, right? And more and more and more. Oh, ravens. We got ravens. Multiple ravens cat on a ledge looking for bunnies and dog over here thinking that there's something in there there probably is what is it Rex get it get it live out the door weather and more what is it Rex <laughs> I think he's barking at a weed is there something in there Rex all right and more from yesterday thanks Oh, one more thing though, T-Rex, 10 minutes later, still barking. I forget to congratulate the Red Sox. That was so fun last night. We were in the kitchen, we were making a tomato sauce and the Red Sox, the Red Sox pulled one out. That was so fun to watch. And we had some fresh sauce from the garden. All right, yesterday's weather today. Rex, what is going on? And more. And more, 10 a.m. Very subtle, but a little surface boundary just went through. We were all glassy on the water after I just finished taping the Tuesday edition of Out the Door Weather and More. Here we are on Tuesday, and the air just started coming in from the north, even though up in the sky, as you'll see in the time lapse later, the air is still coming kind of from the southwest. So high pressure has more dense air, and it's undermining the warmth right now. And you can still make out the fish spots right there, some fish. Right there, some fish. Right here, a cow. I mean a cat, grazing like a cow. <laughs> and Moose moving his platform around the corner. The sky looks the same. It's called dry fropa, dry frontal passage. And from here on in, the wind ramps up from the north and northeast. Noon time. Steve, you've had enough outside yet? <laughs> T-Rex just came out. There it is, looking into the wind. What's going on down here? I think someone's trying to eradicate knotweed. That is a special trick in itself. Yeah, I mean, you can either treat it or you can just repeatedly pull it up. You will eventually feed it, but, or you just take the whole thing up. Aqua safe. 
aquatic, what? EPA certified, like aquatic. Yeah, what was that first word to use? Glyphosate. G. Yeah. Glyphosate. G yeah. G-L-Y-P-H-O-S-A-T-E. And is there a certain time that you have to apply that? No, this time of year is, so the way glyphosate is systemic, um, so how it basically, this time of year is the best to use it because the plant, instead of trying to push out energy from its roots, it's actually sequestering energy into its roots. So the herbicide gets put on the, the leaf or onto the, the stem, and then because of this time of year, the plant's more likely to draw the herbicide right into its root system, thus killing it. So. Thanks, Phil. That's a good lesson there. It's catnap time, 3 p.m. It's also time to close the windows time because the air is coming in from the east to the northeast and the temperature's gone from mid-70s to mid-60s. So now we close the windows for a couple days, seeing little bits of white caps almost starting to form. New high pressure from Canada, another one. Hurricane repellent. I throw that phrase around pretty loosely, hurricane repellent. High pressure from Canada doesn't really repel the hurricanes. It's the flow from Canada that brings in the high from Canada that repels the hurricanes. And that same cloud that moved north in the upper level flow is now moving south. And wonderful images coming out from all our content providers of the halo phenomena. The sun dogs and the halo that form when the ice crystals refract off the cirrus clouds. We have some of that going on right now on the great Gulf of Weymouth. As I pan toward the west and the sunset, there is a sun dog right there on the south side of the sun again. And that's right above where T-Rex and Steve are out in the backyard. TK is down at the new beach, George Lane Beach. I can see the birds on the dock, but you can't. Still need to identify those tiny little white birds that were fishing earlier. Steve White says, uh, maybe they're baby snowy egrets. I don't know, I gotta look at the, into that further. So we have the sun setting now before 6.30 and I'm gonna just leave you with a couple time lapse here. The Cape Cod time lapse is working again. So why don't we start with Bass River and those high clouds. And do you see any optical phenomena happening? Well, we've gotta wait a second until the sun gets into the, the viewing area here. It's like a picture window I had growing up and there's the sun and still some clouds. Is there a sun dog on either side of the sun? A little uh, pearl rainbow, Scott. And then here in Weymouth, looking over to Logan Airport, planes landing toward the east once again, taking off toward the east, although I don't really see any right now. Hey, Winthrop. And here in Weymouth, the Gulf of Weymouth. You read those signs? Where our sun dog is getting a little bit better. As it gets lower. Here's the time lapse from Weymouth. Those high thin clouds, not associated with the hurricanes, just the old front settling off to the south thanks to the steering current, which is the real hurricane repellent bringing in the much drier air. And was it freezing this morning in northern New Hampshire and Maine? I know the freeze warning went up. No freeze here in Weymouth. Our tomatoes are going to keep on going. I'll try and get a better look at these birds. Next to the person having a moment of zen, but let's just leave him and the birds there for now. Our sun dog and our setting sun. Appreciate all the viewer comments. Chris watching every day. Outdoors. Out the door, let's go out the door again tomorrow. Windy Wednesday. Actually, today's windy Wednesday. Tomorrow is no front Thursday. Yay, no front Thursday. Talk to you then.